What is up, my friends? My name is Echo Thurmy, and today I'm back with my fourth episode of Asking Echo, where you guys ask me questions and I answer them to the best of my ability with hopes that I can give you some guidance or help somewhere in your life. Today, guys, I have four questions up for you. Two of them are light and two of them are pretty heavy. I hope that you guys stick around to see all of these questions and, um, and my answers to them. I want to take a second and thank all of you for coming down to the channel and supporting this series. It's such an important series to me. I think that... Um, it can really do a lot of good in this world. So what I ask of you is to please share this with your friends, hit that like button, and if you're not already subscribed, please do. I would really appreciate it to show the support to the series. As you know, this series comes out every single Wednesday, and if you want to sub submit questions yourself, you can do so by tweeting at me at Echo Through Me, hashtag asking echo, or you can email me. That email address is in the description below, and of course you can comment in the comments section here. That's the least reliable way for me to get those questions though. All right guys, so we have some gameplay going on, but this is not as much about the gameplay as it is about the questions. So the gameplay's here just for you guys to have something fun to watch while we talk about these two topics. And I'm going to get into that first topic right now guys. And it's from Fear Through Me and he asks, how did you gain your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube? And um, this story has kind of been told in the past, in past vlogs, but I'll get into it again now. As many of you know, this channel started as a, um, a compliment to my website, which was steamfirst.com. So this channel used to be focused on Steam and PC gaming. In those first two years, this channel was run by myself and a bunch of other content creators. We all put on content. I did more live streaming and uh, reviews and gameplays were put on by people that worked for me on the website. So my first thousand subscribers actually came during that time where I had people that were coming to the channel that really enjoyed PC gaming and Steam gaming. Um, and that was mostly thanks to the people that were creating the majority of the content, which was not me. Then in probably about a year ago from now, I sold the website, continued doing PC gaming on here and some streaming, and then in June decided to switch it over to Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. At that point in time, um, I basically said goodbye to all the other people. They were not interested in this content, and I took it on myself. So starting in June, I started uploading content every single day, sometimes twice per day. And um, in that time, if you want to consider that is when this channel actually bloomed and became what it is, because that is what this channel is focused on right now, um, I gained my first 1,000 from that time from being consistent, putting out the best content that I possibly could, and getting in touch with and interacting with my watchers, with my people in the comments, and on Twitter as much as I possibly could. And those are the tips that I give to anyone that's starting a channel and ask me the same question, how do you grow? And that's that's those are the tips, guys, that have worked best for me. Now, I am far from a huge YouTuber, but that's what's worked for me to get to where I am, which is a little bit over 5K right now, and that's be consistent, put the best content out that you possibly can, and interact with your viewers. Those are the tips, and I think if you follow those tips, you really can't go wrong. All right, so our next question is coming from Jimbo Slice, and he has one that's a bit of a personal question from his life, and he says, I got these two friends. One of them is one of my best friends, and he's friend number one. He's only been my friend for about a year now. Well, the other guy has only been my friend, and he's friend number two, for a couple of months. Before I met these two, they were both best friends. Friend two doesn't seem to like me because he thinks that I'm becoming best friends with number one and replacing him. What should I do? Well, I have uh, some suggestions or just maybe a little discussion about this. And um, Jimbo, being friends with someone for a year or even for a few months, you know, that's not a very long time. Now, obviously, a year is longer than a few months. Of course, it doesn't take a genius to say that. But, um, you know, just like in relationships, it takes a while to figure out who people really are. You know, I've been friends with people in my life, and I'm friends with them for, for a while, and then I realize, you know, this isn't really someone that I enjoy hanging out with, that I enjoy the company of, and, you know, maybe I'm not going to hang out with them as much. Not saying that's what you should do. I'm just saying that sometimes it takes a while to actually understand and realize what your friends are like and who they really are. Now, how would I suggest you handle this? It seems that you enjoy hanging out with both of these people, that you have a lot of fun with both of them, and that they're both actually really good friends to you. 
So the best thing that you could do is t talk to friend number two, and that's going to be the answer to so many different things. And I really believe that in life, if you're open with people and you talk to people, letting them know how you truly feel, you know, you're going to get a good response and a good result out of it. So what I would suggest, talk to friend number two, let them know that you really enjoy hanging out with both of them, that they're both cool, you all have a lot of fun together, and that you, you're you not trying to replace them as the best friend, that you just enjoy hanging out with both of them and that you want them both in your life as your friend because it's a lot of fun and uh, it makes life better for you. Now, if his response to that is, I get it, that's cool, let's continue, let's, let's be friends and, and have a lot of fun and enjoy life, that's great. If he responds with some type of a jealous response or, you know, um, I want you to stay away from my buddies and my friend for a long time and you're stepping on my toes, then maybe you should reevaluate that friendship with friendship number two and, um, and really see if he's someone that you want to spend a lot of your time with and, and really become friends with. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a decision that you have to make yourself, but um, that's, that's the response right there, buddy. Um, you know, sometimes friends aren't there who they're cracked up to be, but... You find out by having that discussion and seeing where they stand. All right, let's get into one more replay for my next question here. All right, my next question is from Minecraft Gamer, and it says, Asking Echo, what made you want to be a YouTuber? Oh, well, what made me want to be a YouTuber? I guess I always liked doing something on the web. I've owned two blogs before this. That's been mentioned many times, um, and that became a, a lot, uh, I guess you could call it a handful, a lot of extra work that I really didn't want to do it was taking away from the fun of creating content and YouTube is all about creating content I don't need to manage people I don't need to manage a website I don't need to protect the website from um, viruses and spam and all that kind of stuff although you do get your fair share of spam on YouTube for sure um, I just I really started YouTube and wanted to create content on YouTube because I love gaming, I love Clash of Clans and Clash Royale, and I like creating something, I like making something for the community. So um, what I get to do here, I get to create videos that I find that I find fun, that are sharing my passion for these two games, and um, that maybe can help somebody out somewhere along the lines when they're trying to learn how to play the game. As far as the Asking Echo series, it's a little bit deeper, trying to help people out as far as they can go and as far as they can see in their life. So, um, of course, every person that's on YouTube has that dream of being being discovered, being found, and actually growing and getting a large following and being able to make a career out of it. You know, we all have that dream somewhere tucked away. Um, but at the same time, you know, it's so such a tiny chance that that would actually happen. I mean, I put out content with hopes that one day that will happen. I put out the best stuff that I can, but I am not quitting my day job, um, you know, trying to make that happen. I put out an episode a day, sometimes two episodes a day, and, um, you know, and if, if it ever happens, if I start to, to grow, I'll be so happy and I'll be so uh, excited about it. And I, and I can't even say if, because I have been seeing great growth, great support from the Clash of Clans and Clash Royale communities. Um, so, you know, I, I am already growing and I'm happy about that. But I guess what made me initially start doing YouTube is creating the content, the love for the games, and me really being able to, to share some things that I know and to sh share my passion with you guys and uh, to just really have fun with other people on YouTube. Now, when I had the blogs, it was really, the interaction with people was very small. You know, you have forums, but they're not really that big anymore. So I created all this content and my interactions with the, with the viewers and the readers was, you know, was not really that big. So here on YouTube, I get so much interaction in every video that I do that I really feel that I'm like hanging out with friends sometimes when I'm going through the comments section and uh, really being able to just have conversations with people that is a lot of fun. So that's my passion behind YouTube. And uh, that's, that's what I like doing, and that's why I like doing it. And we have one more question, guys. And that one uh, is from an anonymous v uh, viewer or person asking the question, I guess you should say. And uh, let's get into it. It's, it's, a, it's a long one here. I'm going to read it to my best ability. It's a, it jumps around a little bit, but here we go. Uh, as expected, my children's mother had to go run to get breakfast sandwiches just now after sitting in the bathroom with the door closed for three afters, three hours, sorry, after being gone for five hours, after waking up, getting ready for 30 minutes and leaving in the first place. Shaking my head, I can't even be upset for me, my poor kids don't understand except for my oldest, my daughter, 
she's smarter than everyone thinks. This is so horrible, I don't even know how to look my kids in the eye anymore. I mean, am I doing wrong by staying? I don't want to teach them that it's okay to let your anything disrespect you or be ratchet. But I don't want to destroy them like my parents did to me and to her. My youngest birthday is in two weeks. I just don't know anymore. So let's talk about what's going on here, guys. This is a pretty deep question. Now we're talking about a guy who's married and who has a handful of kids. And uh, his wife is doing things that he is not approving of. You know, from this, um, she's I'm getting that she's being unfaithful and um, really doing wrong by her, her vows of her marriage, by her husband, and by her children. And the, the issue that you run into here, guys, and me being a father and also being a husband, you know, you, you tend to sit around and deal with a lot more than you would if you were just, you know, dating somebody. When you're married and when you have kids, you really feel that you need to be there for those kids and you'll deal with a lot of crap before you actually decide to leave. Now that's if you're a good parent, which this person clearly is. Um, so, suggestions. I mean, um, I'm not even sure from this situation if the wife knows that the husband knows what's going on or if she thinks she's being sneaky and doesn't know. But I mean, if, you're, if your wife or if your boyfriend or girlfriend is going out to get some groceries and is gone for five hours, um, it's pretty obvious that something is going on other than shopping. So, um, what needs to happen in my opinion, and, and there are so many different ways to handle this, um, I would say you have to stick around for as long as you can just for your kids. Um, you know, you can't just desert your kids. You, like I said before, you'll suck up a lot of crap before you actually end up leaving yourself. But you have to stay there for your kids as long as you can, and, um, but you have to have that conversation with the wife. You need to sit her down and let her know that you know what the hell's going on and you need to put her in the hot seat and have her try to explain what's going on. Clearly, if this is going on, she's got an interest for someone else for whatever reason. I have no idea what that reason may be, but she needs to be put in the hot seat and she needs to be have to answer. She has to answer for what she's been doing. Now that's uncomfortable as heck to do. But um, it's a lot more uncomfortable for her to have to answer it as well. And that's something you need to remember. You know, and asking her those questions is really difficult. And it's going to be really sad and it's hurtful. Um, and hearing her response may be hurtful as well. But you have to sit her down and have that conversation. And from that conversation, you could decide. You could give her an ultimatum and be like, this needs to stop or I need to go. Um, the problem with saying that is, you know as a father that having to go could result in you, um, you know, losing some type of custody from those kids, and that's not something that you want, especially if you're a father that really loves his kids and that really, um, you know, is a great father. So that's where it's difficult, right there. You know, I all this advice that I'm going to give on this question right here are just avenues and suggestions. I don't want you jumping into something just because I said so and it being the wrong choice for you. And that's with all the questions, actually, guys. You know, these are just suggestions. Think about them and decide how you want to handle things with, with what's right for you. I definitely don't want to ruin anybody's lives, that's for sure. But, um, so, sit her down, have that conversation. If she says things that you don't want to hear or that are not the right answers for you, then maybe you need to make that decision that it's time for you to prepare your kids, let your kids know every single day how much you love them and how important they are to you, and, um, and then at some point you need to do what's right for you in your life as well. You can't always worry about, <coughs> excuse me, you can't always just worry about those kids. Although as a parent and as a father that's so natural to do because all you care about are those kids. But sometimes if you're really living in misery and every single day is just horrible for you because of what you're dealing with in this situation, then... Um, you know, you have to make a change and you can't stick around forever even though you have kids that would be affected by it. You can still be a great father if you are separated or divorced from the wife because, um, you know, it's obviously going to be something difficult for the kids not having mom and dad there, but if things are that bad and you're that unhappy, then it may need to be what happens. But the suggestion is have that conversation with the wife, see what her response is and react from there. Um, Hopefully you get the answer that you want from her. I really hope that um, that you guys are able to work on this relationship and that she's able to give you a response that's 
respectful to you, respectful to the relationship that you have, and respectful to the, um, the children that are involved in this as well. But if she doesn't, then you need to decide how you need to handle it because uh, you can't be unhappy throughout your life just because you're trying to make others happy. And it's really hard to say that because uh, if I were in that same situation, I, I would deal with so much just because I didn't want to lose my kids. And I know that if I were to you know, end my relationship with my wife, I would see my kids so much less. Even being a good father, um, you know, sharing custody, you don't see your kids every night. You don't get to put them in the bed every night either. And that's something that needs to be thought of when making this decision. One of the hardest decisions to make are ones that will involve your kids. And if you're a teenager watching this or a young person and you don't have kids yet, you will one day see how important they are and how much they change your life. So, um, so there you go to Mr. Anonymous who sent in this question. I hope that, um, that my words somehow helped you in some way or, or at least made you feel better or see a little straighter. I'm not really sure, but um, I wish you the best of luck with that situation. And um, hopefully this was a little bit helpful. So guys, as we sit here and you just watched my three crown right there in double time, I want to again thank you all for coming down to the channel and remind you that I appreciate each and every single one of you every single day that you're down here. Um, again, if you want to submit a question to Asking Echo, do so by the ways that are listed in the description below, at Echo Through Me, hashtag Asking Echo is the best way. What I do with all of these questions is I store them away, I put them in a little folder, and I get to them every single week. I choose a few questions and I throw them into an episode. And uh, that's how we get what you're watching right now. I hope that all of you enjoyed the episode and decide to hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, I hope you guys decide to hit that like button as well. Best of luck to all the people I talked about and I talked to in this episode. I really wish you all the best of luck with your situations. And uh, guys, I come out with content every single day. Clash of Clans and Clash Royale. Hope to see you guys back again tomorrow. Until then, be good.